What's going on Twitch and YouTube? Welcome to episode 44 of the USS Cerrito tutorial. I'm Zero Elite and I just want to thank you very much for tuning in to today's episode. And if you haven't, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and helping me in supporting the channel. I can't thank you enough for that. Today we got about um, just about a 30 minute video. Um, I'm actually going to be uh, if you're on YouTube, this will be broken up into two episodes, but if you're with me on the live stream tonight, uh, I'm going to be streaming for an hour and banging out two episodes at once. The reason I'm doing this, uh, just because of the length of the video and I don't want to exceed uh, 30 minutes. This is actually why I didn't, one of the reasons why I did not get a video out um, last night, because uh, I was working on the USS Enterprise D actually, and um, I didn't actually have an hour to record. So I wanted to wait a day uh, before I jump into that. Um, so those of you that have been asking about the Enterprise D, I have begun construction on it. Um, I'm sure some of you may ask for a teaser. Right now I'm not ready to show any teaser. I'm still heavy in the early phases of construction on the saucer section. Uh, so right now, if you would like to get a teaser of the Enterprise D, you're going to have to follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash zero elite. And you can typically catch my live stream Sundays through Thursday nights between 9 and 10 p.m. Eastern. However, um, while I'm going to be working on the Enterprise D, at least for the remainder of this week, uh, you can expect that I'll be on at different times of the day. So definitely keep an eye on my Twitch channel uh, for when I'll be streaming because uh, I have a lot of work to do on the Enterprise D. That's actually been a pretty complicated build, but we'll get into that when that tutorial starts. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it instead of holding this thing off any more than we really need to. We'll be working on a couple of different areas on the interior today. We're going to be focusing on the left and right main corridor of the saucer section and prepping out eventually where our crew quarters are going to go. And we're also going to be building out the shuttle bay control room, which is uh, actually pretty unique to this uh, specific uh, ship. I was actually really happy with how uh, this build in general turned out. Uh, everything for the most part has come out pretty good. So you can see right now we're on the left side main corridor. We went right down that hallway to the middle and bring us right into engineering. So we're going to be starting here. And we're pretty much going to be building out uh, the same corridor on both the left side and right side. We're going to start out with a facade uh, for a turbo lift that will go down into the lower hull. Um, going to grab a couple of blocks here. We need that white uh, terracotta. And literally this post right here, this blue line, this is literally what I'm going to be turning into the facade for the turbo lift to go in the lower hull, which works out because this is actually directly above the pylon attached to the engine. So this is where the, uh, um, the actual turbo lift would go anyway. So one downside with this build um, is that the angle of the pylons, there's no way to make a turbo lift going down into the lower hull. Um, in order to do that, we would have had to have made this thing significantly larger. And um, at that point, um, it would have been a ton of work. I've actually been finding that on the Enterprise D, and uh, I've had people ask me in the past, hey, why don't you build larger scale ships? And uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. The main one I always say is because you're never going to fill up all that space. Um, but another really valid reason, and I've honestly just been reminded of this as I've been working on Enterprise D, is that um, the bigger you go, you're going to have, um, you're just literally increasing your work. So I've pretty much what I've been finding out over the course of the past four days is that uh, the size that I went with for the Enterprise D, it's uh, it's ended up being quite a quite a lot. Um, I think I settled on 189 by 260. So the saucer is pretty big, 
um, in comparison. I think the Cerrado saucer is only um, 134. Now, 189 by 260 doesn't sound big, but put it this way, the saucer alone is so big that the width and length, um, I could actually fit the Cerritos inside of it. That's how big it is. Um, so that's a main reason why I don't go as large as I do, um, or don't go as large as uh, what people ask is, it's a ton of work. And um, if you do happen to make a stake, it's a ton of work to try to correct that error. So it's a little bit more manageable when you build a ship this size. Um, I'm not going to lie, after I'm done with Enterprise D, I may not necessarily do another ship that big again, just because the length of time it's going to take me to build it. Um, I've actually had to change up some of my um, methods as far as how I go about building these ships, sp uh, specifically for the tutorial, because I'm trying to make it in a way that I'm not going to be 20 episodes deep and we're still working on the saucer section. Um, but again, you know, this thing is going to be massive. And uh, I know I'm talking a little bit more about the Enterprise D today, but that's only because that's a ship I've been working on the last couple of days. I'm really excited to get into it. Um, I've had a lot of people, a lot of interest in the, uh, recently in the past on the Enterprise D and when I'm going to do it. And uh, yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about that because I'm currently working on it now and uh, I'm pretty happy with the progress I'm making, but I'm taking my time with it to try to get it as close as I can as possible. Um, with every single ship, they all have their own challenges and Enterprise D is no exception. Um, but uh, I'm just going to take it one episode at a time, just like we did with the Cerritos. Getting back in a little bit what we got going on here, you can see I'm just filling in my walls here. And I'm not doing anything fancy. Uh, to go into the actual turbo lift here, I'm just literally replicating our main corridor hallways. So the pattern of white on the bottom, gray in the middle, and white on top. Pretty cut and dry, easy to get that design, and um, it screams next gen. As far as the straightaway corridors on this ship, I was super happy with how they came out. But uh, my circular corridors on the Cerritos, I'm not going to lie, those are something to be desired. I'm not happy with how they turned out. Um, I haven't had anybody say anything negative about them, but this is just my own personal opinion on them. Just, I didn't like how they turned out. And um, I'm going to try to actually redesign them. But what's going to end up happening is that whatever design I settle on, is good. Um, I'll end up converting... Uh, the Cerritos is circular corridors for that, and Enterprise D will have that also. So um, that's something to definitely uh, keep an eye out for because I'm going to be making some type of change to the circular corridors. I'm just not certain what that change is going to be exactly yet. Um, I could very well end up using a similar design on what I did for the circular corridors on my Enterprise A and the Discovery because those are virtually the same. I just changed the color pattern. And I might end up having to do the same thing here, only because I'm having basically the same problem that I had with every other ship that I've made when I've done the circular corridors. And pretty much the pattern in which I build them on uh, the Enterprise uh, A and the Disco Enter Enterprise is pretty much the only way I've been able to come up with where it actually works. Um, my main concern why I haven't switched it over yet is because I'm not 100% confident I'll be able to translate that design over into next gen and give it a, a next gen color palette. I'm going to try to. I might end up being able to make it work pretty easily, but um, regardless, you know, I definitely uh, expect a change to come to the circular corridors uh, once I figure out exactly what I want to do. Um, even if I don't end up getting it by the end of the Cerritos, um, I think what I'll do is I'll either do like an update video on the Cerritos or something like that and show how I did it. And uh, for those that are interested in building it, I might just uh, refer them to the Enterprise D circular corridors. If that's the case, we'll see. If I end up uh, coming up with a solution while I'm still working on the Cerritos, I'm going to add that. I'll definitely incorporate that change in the, in the tutorial, but I'm not going to hold it up just for that because I think it, as is, I could get away with leaving the circular corridors the way they are. I don't think I would bat an eye at them. I want to make that change, though, because I'm not happy with how they look, and I don't think that they really look all that much like they're supposed to. It's kind of what I'm getting at. Looking pretty good so far. Uh, 
getting this flooring done. You see, I'm just swapping out the gray for the blue in the center to match the rest of my hallways. We've got our nice facade going here for our turbo lifts to go from the saucer section to the lower hull. So those of you that want to throw in a transport block, <clears throat> this room that I'm making here is where you're going to want to throw that in. So this way you can transport between the saucer section and the lower hull. It's kind of a cheat, but that's honestly the only way you're going to be able to get to it um, without going outside the ship. Because this thing is uh, just how they designed it. You know, um, I've talked about this a little in the past. You know, when you're dealing with animation, they're not really, um, they don't have to follow the same rules as we do in the real world. And they can get away with uh, taking a lot of liberties with, with the designs. And, like, I get why they did it, because in Star Trek, you can just say, well, the turbo lift can literally go in any direction, so why can't it go down at an angle and at a slant? Um, so I, I get the logic behind it. But as far as building it goes, at least on Minecraft, it's not really all that possible to do without having the most jankiest staircase of all time, assuming your Serratus is big enough to do it. And even then, it's not going to be a turbo lift, so it's not going to give you what you want there. So it's just one of those things, you know, we're just doing what we can for this build. But that's really the only sacrifice that I've made on this thing, which I'm pretty happy with. that gap there literally just to the right of this wrapping around the warp core is where our general crew quarters is going to go we won't be getting that done in today's episode we're only going to have enough time to flesh out this main corridor and also build out uh, the shuttle bay control room but uh, that'll be pretty interesting uh, to build out and uh, the shuttle bay control room at least on the Cerritos uh, I was able to come uh, dedicate enough room to it to make the shuttle bay control room actually pretty big and i think it fits with the size of the um, shuttle bay itself but once we build that out you're going to have to let me know what you think in the comment section if you like it you see i'm just doing my middle pillar in uh, the center there because I want that to be an indicator that uh, the doors are open, but that is basically a sliding uh, automatic door uh, way that we just made there. We're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to count out to three, and on the fourth block, we're going to do a strip of white terracotta. So this is our doorway to actually go into the turbo lift. I'm going to do this going all the way around and then the pillar in the middle. And then we're going to do a blue, or excuse me, a cyan square up top and then the sea lantern in the very middle to give us the light. And that looks pretty good. Very next gen, I dig it. Just got to close up. There's not really much that we can do there, so we're just going to throw in white on the ceiling. They only got a two wide, a two by three to work with, so there's not really much to do anything but fill it in with a solid color. So right here, uh, to the right there, we're just looking a second ago. That's actually we're going to be building the shuttle bay uh, control room all up in here, and uh, I'm going to try to use the space that we have available to us and. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a, not necessarily a challenge to get there, but we're going to have to use what we have. One of the problems is as we go into that room is that there's actually a corridor there. Um, so we can't build or delete any of that wall. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to throw in a staircase. And um, I wasn't going to have any staircases on this ship. And I did not change my point of view on that until I watched... Um, a tour of the Enterprise D, and I was I was actually kind of shocked when I saw that the Enterprise D has staircases. It's even got them up in the bridge area. Um, just go on YouTube and type in USS Enterprise uh, D 3D tour, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. If it's the same uh, video or one of the same ones, um, 
but uh, it's kind of cool. Like um, basically the one of the like if you're looking towards the back of the bridge, not the turbo lift or not the turbo lift door to the right, but to the door to the left, that would actually bring you down to the conference room. And when you walk through there, there's actually a staircase. And that's kind of what gave me that in like, you know what? I'm just going to throw a staircase in, in here in here and embrace that idea um, and use that staircase as a way to get on top of that corridor that is blocking our view of um, of the shuttle bay. And it was a pretty uh, simple solution for it, but that was really the justification behind it is that next gen era ships have staircases in them in different spots pretty much from what I can gather for decoration. And um, like, I really got the sense like as I was watching the the tour of the ship, because like you see the tiny bit of that on the show, but like uh, when they, you actually get like a 3D animator to go in and like build this thing. I, I don't know if it was like um, a program for uh, a virtual headset. I'm pretty sure that's what it was actually. It was some type of program for like the Oculus Rift where like you can hook that up and you can go on a 3D tour of the Enterprise D. And uh, I, I'm not going to lie, like, I felt like as I was going deck to deck on this thing, I kind of felt like I was on, like, a futuristic Starfleet cruise ship in uh, some of the times, just because of how nice this thing looked, the way that it has, like, the wood finish and whatnot going through it. Um, and But, you know, again, I was just kind of surprised to see staircases on the Enterprise D. But uh, yeah, that was my whole reason for kind of embracing that. We'll build that here in just a couple of minutes. We're just cleaning up our patterns here, making sure everything matches, getting the blue or the cyan block going around, and then the sea lantern in the middle. But that should actually be up top. So we're going to swap that out to the blue concrete. Then you get rid of that cyan, swap that out for blue as well, making sure everything matches. All right, we just got to do this side and we'll be in pretty good shape. We're only going to be going out to the 30 minute mark. Uh, for those of you that are on YouTube, uh, those of you that are with me on Twitch, uh, I am going to stop the stream momentarily at the 30 minute mark, but stick around because I'll be restarting the stream like literally 10 seconds after that. I just want to do that so I have a break between the videos so this way I can uh, edit them a little easier and uh, throw them up over the next two days on my YouTube channel. So that's definitely one of the advantages of uh, subscribing to me on my Twitch channel. Even though I'm relatively new to it, uh, you can always catch my content that comes out on YouTube a day early. And then also you have the opportunity to see me building these uh, ships live. Um, and uh, if you're just tuning in with me uh, right now for the first time in today's episode, then uh, definitely check out my Twitch stream because right now I'm actually in the middle of building the Enterprise D. I'm really excited to be getting into this build. And uh, I've had a few people ask me, you know, when are you going to show like uh, a teaser for this thing? And right now, until I get most of the outside done, I'm not going to show anything on my YouTube channel. And I'm not going to start the tutorial for it until the outside of it's done. Um, so if you want to get a sneak peek of what this thing looks like, follow me at twitch.tv forward slash zero elite. I'm going to be streaming a lot this week during the day. You can always guarantee that I'll be on Sundays through Thursday nights between 9 and 10 p.m. Eastern. After this week, though, it'll be strictly just my regular uh, schedule. I won't be on during the day. I'll just be on the, the evenings between 9 and 10, Sunday through Thursday. But this week, I'm going to be on a ton getting as much, basically as much building done as I possibly can because I'm going to have a little bit less time to work with starting next week. So I kind of want to get a head start on that and uh, really get this build going so I have enough content going to where um, as I go, if I don't have as much time to dedicate into it, that's okay because I've already started it and I've gotten, you know, not a lot done, but I've gotten uh, enough done to where it's starting to look like the Enterprise D. Like, I'm not going to lie, it's almost like a daunting task because, uh, to be honest with you, um, the thing is so darn big, uh, it's taken me a really long time to make uh, progress on it because of the, the amount of rows that it's taking uh, 
to render this thing out. So it's taking a little bit longer than I expected. But like I said, this thing is going to be massive. It's uh, 189 by 260. This thing is so big that the length and width, the Serratos can fit inside of the saucer alone. So those of you that wanted a large scale Enterprise D, you're going to get it. Um, I did scale the Enterprise D off of the Serratos. I found screenshots and reference the size the Enterprise D should be in comparison to the Serratos. And that's why I made it the size that it is. Um, I actually resized my saucer twice before I ended up with what I currently have now just to get it at the right size. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, been working on that and check out uh, my Twitch channel as I'm as I'm doing uh, that stuff. I'm going to be switching over to my Pandora here just for a moment because while I was doing this live, um, I like to listen to music, basically. And uh, you won't hear me doing commentary when you catch me on my actual live builds. You'll just hear me uh, jamming out the music. And I do that because like, it helps me to get more uh, into it. And uh, because building on Minecraft, especially when you start building like uh, ships this size and bigger, it can get boring after a while. Like when you're just going row to row, row to row, you know. And if you've uh, any of you have done a large build, you know exactly what I mean. I can it can get boring after a while. So I found that listening to music, um, upbeat music, can really help um, extend your build time while you're playing Minecraft. So. Those of you that are looking for a tip on how to uh, stay on here a little longer, that's my number one thing that I do. When I actually build these things, I listen to music, and it helps me to uh, get a little bit more done. All right, so we are in the room that we're going to be adding our main core, or excuse me, our shuttle bay control room. You can see we're pretty much building it, or going to be building it directly above the corridor that connects to the shuttle bay. And we're gonna have to clean up this whole room and we're not gonna be using all of it. Really what we're gonna focus on is this strip right here where the turbo lift is, or excuse me, where the corridor is. And these little cuts in here will be like the control stations. Um, from there, we're just gonna kind of uh, subtly add little bits at a time until we end up where we need to, to end up. But uh, You can see I'm trying to keep this thing as even as I can. I started off the cyan, or excuse me, the white terracotta pillar, and this is pretty much going to be a stand-in for the staircase. I'm trying to get a placement idea of where that's going to go. Yeah, so we're not going to do anything super fancy here. Just going to make a staircase going up to this level here. We're going to do the same thing on both sides. Just trying to utilize the space that we have available. So, you know, there's kind of one of the empty pockets here that's left between the shuttle bay corridor and engineering. This is where I mean where you can take advantage of these empty pockets sometimes when you're adding extra rooms to your ships. That's honestly, sometimes what I'll end up doing uh, nine times out of 10 when I have a lot of my ship established. Um, and you can see that I'm using the shapes that I have to dictate the shape of the room. And um, that can actually be really helpful in a lot of different ways because a lot of times, in most cases, a lot of the stuff that we're working on, this is a clear example, it's like, Try to find a screenshot where this is like an area that's like been fully explored. It's really hard to, to come by uh, if you can find anything at all. So you're kind of forced to um, use your imagination. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I'll end up using the um, building area that I have around because it makes it a little bit easier. Not that I don't have a good imagination, I do, but I found that with these ships anyway, it's like... It's like the same thing like if you walk on an aircraft carrier. Form meets function. That's something you're going to see through and through. 
and um, they just kind of make it work with the space that they have. If you've gone on an aircraft carrier, submarine, doesn't really matter. Any type of man-made military type vessel, you see that consistently throughout. And it's going to be the same thing on a starship. Even, but you know, you're talking a couple hundred years in the future, a little bit more technology. But at the end of the day, it's the same idea. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I do that too, because you know that's just kind of the way it is when you're building. So using these walls and what we have to kind of dictate the shape of the room, it's not a bad thing. And really we can use it to our advantage because we have like this beautiful curve going on the right side of the wall. Um, that's the outer wall of engineering. And it, it doesn't look bad. Like it already by itself, you know, looks nice and pretty. Of course, we're going to dock it up and make it look a little bit nicer here. I think one of the things we can do is kind of have like a pillar going all the way up here from the uh, very bottom point of the stairs. I could have even switched that to the white terracotta, and that maybe would have been more appropriate. To be perfectly honest with you, if I really want to have everything matching up perfect, I should have actually moved this pillar one forward so it lines up with this pillar right here. But that's just kind of the OCD kicking in, I guess, and uh, it's not a, a deal breaker, but it definitely varies away from my patterning of uh, having things match up. But to be honest with you, I just don't think I noticed it when I was uh, working on it. So you can see I'm adding staircases on this side here, and I'm doing that because, like I said, this area uh, on the opposite side of my back right now is where um, all these control panels are going to go, and obviously the, the window that we can see out into the shuttle bay. You can see we can't delete any more blocks above us. we got to keep what we have. But that's okay. We have just enough room that we can walk downstairs and there's no problem. You can see I'm just cleaning up this side here, making everything match up. we could do here and this may not be a bad idea is just going back from the pillar just fill it all in and just make that a wall and we'll still have a curve on that back wall there it just won't be as drastic now but I think that'll look maybe a little bit nicer than what we had before um, and this is also going to help to blend in uh, the staircase I think a little bit better maybe than just having a pillar there you know it's going to look like it's cut into the wall um, which is going to look a lot. It's going to look really nice and clean. Yeah, see that looks nice with the the double wall. We can get rid of this builder line. We don't need it. <clears throat> because we're going to be filling in the floor with a different color, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm doing my blue line going straight back, and I did this on the left side as well. And I'm trying to get a gauge of how my uh, I'm going to make my flooring in here and what exactly I'm going to do. And you can see I started that wall right off the pillar, and I'm probably going to bring it right up to the edge of this uh, lip of the corridor, or excuse me, the turbo lift that goes down into the lower hull. And then we'll just have a little bit more dead space here, which you could utilize in survival. But we don't necessarily need to have a giant room here, you know. Could also have it going at an angle. We got a couple of options there. I'm going to think about that for a few, for a moment or so. Uh, we might switch over to something else, but we're going to come back to that. All right, I think this is actually a pretty good spot to start uh, stop at because we'll have just uh, 30 minutes to go off of uh, the next episode. So 
those of you that are with me on Twitch right now, uh, just hang. I'm going to stop this video just for a moment, but I'll uh, literally uh, I'll be back with episode 45 in about 10 seconds after that. Uh, those of you on YouTube, you'll have to tune in tomorrow for episode 45. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for me today. I just want to thank you all again for tuning in today's episode. If you did enjoy this content, please help me out. Hit that like and subscribe button in helping me and supporting the channel. I can't thank you enough for that. New subscribers, always don't forget to hit notifications on so you always get notified when those new videos drop. And speaking of new videos, don't forget you can always catch my live streams at twitch.tv forward slash zero elite. And uh, you can always catch my new live streams airing Sundays through Thursdays, typically between 9 and 10 p.m. Eastern. Also, don't forget to follow me at my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash zero elite. You can always catch my new Starship Evo builds dropping on Mondays and my Minecraft videos dropping Tuesdays through Fridays. Those videos on YouTube drop at 10 a.m. Eastern. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for me. I just want to thank you all again for tuning in today's episode. I hope everybody has a happy and safe week and I'll catch you on the next episode.